All right, guys, welcome to another risk management video. In this video, we're going to be taking a quick look at take profits, okay? And, uh, guys, pretty much the name of the game with take profits is, uh, you, know how, you know how much confluence we use for identifying entries. We talk about how, you know, you need to find multiple technical reasons to take any given entry. The more reasons you can find for that entry, the better the trade, the better uh, risk uh, reward, the better win to loss, right? All the above, right? And so when we look at exits, just exits in general, not even necessarily particularly take profit levels, but just exits in general, guys, you want to use the exact same uh, confluence for your exits that you do your entries. And I think that's very difficult for beginners to understand. I know it was very difficult for me to understand. I thought that when I finally felt like I had entries down that uh, I was good and I was in for a very rude awakening when I realized that uh, exits are even, if not uh, just as difficult, I would even argue that they're more difficult than the entries themselves. And so um, the key that I found uh, through experience, guys, is using confluence for your exits as well. So uh, I want to walk you guys through a trade that we actually took in cold about a week or two ago on USD CAD. And I want to show you guys how we exited this trade, okay? And um, first thing we're going to look at is why did we enter? And the entry was pretty simple. We had a very nice channel coming through, like so. I think we had it originally here and uh, like this. And then we saw that there was a structure breach to the upside here. And we had a major uh, support and resistance level down here, which we were finding support at originally. Anyways, um, I believe it was also a Fibonacci extension. Um, it was an Elliott Wave completion. So um, let me just quickly show you guys what that looks like. Boom, boom, boom. We had uh, a lot of confluence to take the trade, right? And finally with a bullish Marubozu candle here, okay. Now, this was the entry, right? So you guys just got an idea of the kind of confluences we were using for our entry. Now, originally, um, we were looking at a couple potential take profit areas. And uh, I'm a fan of, of take profit levels. Um, being able to uh, foresee when the chart's going to run into issues. And uh, the reason why is because you're not always going to get a ton of signs that you need to get out before it's too late. The first level that we were looking at was right in here for take profit one and then the second level we were looking at was right in here for our take profit two. Now uh, we did not actually hold this trade all the way until our take profit two. Let me just go ahead and uh, mark that here. TP2. Okay, we did not all uh, hold this trade all the way until TP2, and that's pretty much going to be the premise for this video. Why did we get out, and how are we, you know, recommending that you guys exit your trades? Okay, so we get up here to our TP1 area, and you know, like I said, we are a fan of TPs, meaning that when price hits your take profit level, you're out. Okay, we are a fan of that. Just to give you guys some more value, we're going to talk about uh, more so active management, okay? Active exits, uh, that is. When price reached this level, it, there was no signs of difficulty at all. We just breached right through it. And then when we came back, we were holding. So, you know, there was no reason to, to exit the trade there at all, okay? Now, moving forward, we got up here, okay? And we're about halfway in between our TP1 and our TP2 zone. And we start to develop a range here with our support already marked. And we, we developed a new resistance up here above our head. And uh, we actually exited our trade at this resistance right in here. Okay. We, we saw about three or four very convincing rejections. And we decided, you know what? It's not worth the risk to continue to hold this trade. Okay. And that's point number one, guys. If you're in a trade, all right, and, and you're in a trade, 
and you're up, let's say in this case, we're up 250 pips, okay? We're up 250 pips of profit, and there were 60 pips until our expected take profit level, okay? Now, let me ask you something. Is it worth risking 250 pips to make 60? Okay, we've already gone through the risk management video on risk to reward. You guys know that that trade would not make any sense. So if, if you're in a scenario where you're having to question whether you should remain in the trade, the very first question you need to ask yourself is, does the risk to reward at this time make sense? Okay, if the answer is no, you need to take your profits. All right, it's, it's as simple as that. Now, that's the first part, okay? Now, the second part is, is your exit justified, okay? Well, let's take a look here. Why don't we take a look at this area and see if we have a justified exit. Looking to the left, we have what was obviously, and you can see all the way here, was obviously working as a supply zone, okay? Very obvious supply zone here, and that's, uh, you know, we weren't really looking at that. When we were looking at our targets, we didn't think that was gonna be significant. In this case, it just so happened to be, right? So A, right off the bat, as soon as we start seeing that we're having issues in this area, we can look to the left and justify why that might be happening, okay? And that's, that's something that's really key. Now, the next thing is this, okay? Do we have any kind of, of channel or trend line that has formed since we've been in this trade, right? And what's the answer? The answer is yes, we do have a channel or trend line that formed, right? It looks like this, okay? We had one, two, three, four bottoms here, and then I could draw the other side of this as well, uh, looks something like like this, right? But that's that's not important for this particular example. But we did have that form, and look, it broke, okay? So now we have a second justification, okay? We say, okay, we were in this channel. This channel has now breached. We would now expect to enter a new channel, and we would expect that channel would be going in the other direction, right? In this case, it looks like when we went into our next channel, the channel was more sideways than anything, right? But a lot of times what's gonna happen is the channel is gonna be bearish and then the, the market's gonna reverse and that's gonna be it. You're not gonna get any other chances. See, here's the next channel we go into, right? So, um, so that's the second thing, right? Our channel breached. So that's another reason why we should consider exiting the trade. Now, a third reason, if you take all of this out, look at this guys, we have, where's my, here it is. We have one, two, three, four, five, six rejections. Guys, six rejections, look at the price action in here, right? Very bearish candlesticks formula. This very textbook bearish exhaustion candle right here. The only reason, guys, really the only reason why you would have remained in this trade is because this support, which also in this, uh, in this particular example was acting as a structural support held. But guys, that is the only reason, okay? And we knew that, and when we decided to exit this trade right in here, we knew that structure was still holding bullish and therefore we could still be in a valid buy trade. However, we made the decision using confluence, okay? And that's really what the premise of this video is, guys. It's about using confluence to exit your trades, right? And I'm gonna clear all this off. I wanted to show you that specific example, but there are a lot of great examples, guys. And and uh, let's do a hypothetical example on the sell trade that we entered on, or not entered, but that we were currently in. We're in this sell trade coming down, and uh, we had our, our take profit level hit, but let's use an example. What if we were in this sell trade and we were aiming for this level down here? Okay, so, so maybe we had entered our sell trade somewhere in here, all right, and we were aiming for this level down here. And guys, this should look like a very, very familiar example. How often do you set a take profit level or a target and price gets halfway there, a quarter of the way there, three quarters of the way there, and maybe even almost there, like pips away, but then reverses? Where do you get out, all right? Guys, you have to be equipped to be able to manage your trades and exit with profits. Guys, you can't sit here in this sell trade, right? And you can't let 
380 pips turn around and come back and stop you out of break even or even worse, negative. Okay, you have to be able to effectively manage this trade and use the concept of risk to reward. Right. So at this at this time down here, guys, we were running 380 pips. There are 60 pips left to our take profit. You know, you can only risk so much at that point for it to make sense. Anything more than 60 pips really doesn't make sense. Okay. So the way you handle a situation like this where where price doesn't make it to your TP is you need to have management techniques, right? You need to be able to say to yourself, hey, I have this trend line, right? It's a pretty well-defined trend line. You can even channel this up. Guys, don't be afraid to add confluence, okay? You can even channel this up right here. And you can say, look, we have pretty solid channel here. She bounces. We have three peaks to the upside. Like it's a pretty solid channel. If this channel breaches, I don't want to be in the sell trade anymore, right? So use these guys, use these together, whichever one that you used, understand that that needed to be your exit. You had to have something where you said, hey, we are no longer bearish. This trade is no longer valid, okay? And without that, guys, if you don't have that, you're never gonna be able to trade. You're never gonna have confidence in your trades. You're never going to have the uh, command over the market that you need to trade consistently well, okay? So obviously I use trend lines and channels in this example. I think they work really well. I think that structure works really well. Um, the only thing I would say about structure, guys, is that make sure that you don't trail your stops. We did a video on trailing stops. Do not trail your stops above structure because you will get taken out. Okay, here's a great example right here. If you put your... Uh, stop loss right above right here. This wick is going to take you out. But if you notice, structure held the entire way down here on USD CAD in this move, right? So structure is not a bad way to manage your trades. And then you're going to get out right in this area, right? When the main structure breaches, that's your exit. So using uh, structure, highly recommend, guys. We use that. Uh, using trend lines, again, highly recommend trend lines channels. Um, there are a lot of techniques, guys. SNR, you can use SNR. Guys, right? Remember the the general idea of in a downtrend, all supports must break. You don't know that necessarily all resistances will hold, but all supports must break. Guys, the second that you start to see, let me make the news up. The second that you start to see resistances break down in the market, you should start to wonder if you're still bearish, right? So use all of this together, guys. This this video is about trade management. And this is a very, very, very important topic. It took us a long time to master trade management. It's probably one of the most difficult things in the entire journey you're going to have to learn. And I hope that this video speeds up that learning curve for you guys. Um, this is the key that we found. It works very well for us. Very consistent. It's very profitable. See you guys next time.